now we're happy to welcome Brainkool and CEO Martin Vallet. Welcome, Martin. Thank you. So today I'm going to present Brainkool. Brainkool in short, we're a medical device company based here in Lund, Sweden. We're focusing on two business areas. Brain cooling, which is about target temperature management, and oncology, prevention of serious side effect of cancer treatment. We have, in short, brought three medical device products to, to close to the market or close to the market here. The Brain Cool system, which is called iCool in the U, uh, which is called iCool in the U.S., uh, is a medical device that's used in the ICU for brain cooling treatment in sudden cardiac arrest and neurological fever and stroke stroke patients. RhinoChill is a more point of care device where you can enable the time window to start cooling much, much quicker in the street or in the ambulance or from the ER with the objective that earlier cooling leads to improved results. Cor Coral system is a medical device for prevention of oral mucositis, which is a serious side effect of cancer treatment. We have brought the first product market launched at the beginning of two, the year of 2000. It has three 510k approvals by now, uh, and we succeeded in getting 16 million Swedish in sales the COVID years 2020 and 21, and have started out the year of 2022 very, very positive, and have set a sales prognosis this year for more than 20 million. And the objective is to reach over 100 million sales 2025 only on this device. We've been successful in raising grants for our clinical development and development and are listed on Spotlight stock market. The agenda for today is that I will touch base on the growth plan of BrainCool and the forecast we've set for 2025. Then I will focus on a project where we have an EU grant of 3 million euro where we just uh, yesterday, oh, yesterday when this is filmed, <laughs> coming back from Germany, the first trial has been presented of a combined TTM treatment with thrombectomy. If there is time, we'll give a short update on our oncology efforts. So the brain cool system, or, or the brand iCool in the US, is, is a market which is on the intensive care unit. Brain cool system is an uh, advanced high quality TTM system that automatically detects uh, change in cooling and do cooling treatment in either sudden cardiac arrest for 72 hours or treatment of neurological fever, which could be treatment process for more than 5, 10, 15 days. Uh, the, the brain cool has a number of distinct patents uh, approved from Japan, Europe and the US, where we have a cooling system with three independent cooling units, zones, which uh, takes the patient down to either the target temperature of 33 or 34 for for a period of time, maintenance cooling and then a controlled rewarming. Um, this is a market which is standard of care for both cardiac arrest and treatment of neurological fever in the US and standard of care for cardiac arrest in Europe and both uh, patient groups in South Korea and Japan. We are very helped by new guidelines 2020 and 21 stating that one has to start using high quality TTM system, meaning not water blankets where you just have a sort of a cooling system which just cool down a blanket without any control, but more an advanced system with software electronics that automatically detects changes in the temperature and adapt to that and counteract. The growth plan of, of BrainCool is that this year we received sales orders of this device of more than 15 million, the US and Korea. And we set a sales forecast this year and the growth plan to 2025 with these numbers, 20 million, more than 20 million this year and exceed 100 million uh, 2025. We're great help by, there's, there is only one, three high quality TTM products and there's a gradual change from water blankets to this product. There's an expansion of the market of neurological fever, which is treatment of high uncontrolled fever at the Nevro ICU, which has been enabled also by COVID-19. Patients have also had these problems, uh, problems. In the US, we signed agreement with a lar large number of healthcare system and GPOs, which is general purchase organizations that enables the current US launch. Our aim now is to get from five states where we focused the first two years to bring this up to up to 20 states in the US. 
Long term, this market is helped by their several international TTM clinical trials in this space, and we hope uh, to be part of some of those, which, which thrombectomy is a case, where we use, there's a time window of this treatment, and we have two devices where we're implementing a concept called brain cell with the aim to not interrupt the chain of cooling, which is described later on <laughs> when I present uh, a little bit with the Rhine Shield system. The roadmap for 2022 to 20, 2025 is first of April we had an installed base of 70 systems. We aim to sell roughly 40, 50 more units this year and, and set up a production series from starting from June of 200 new units of Brankel system which is going to be expanded to 400 by end of the year of 24 and 25. That leads to an installed base of roughly six, seven hundred systems in 2025, uh, and we think we gradually can improve the patient uses of the system. Average was 10 patients per system 2020, uh, reaching 2014, 21, uh, and we have a clear indication that that could be increased to 2020. In our financial prognosis, however, we've been very conservative with 10 this year and 15 the following years. And if we can increase to 20, for example, we will not exceed 100 million 2025. We could probably exceed or up to reaching 150 million uh, Swedish in sales. Ryan Schill, our second, uh, second device, is uh, also for brain cooling. You can start the cooling much, much earlier. Uh, the duration is only up to three hours. But by starting cooling earlier, and changing to the Brinkle system, preferably at the ICU, you can use the time window because the feasibility, the animal studies, and some of our own studies clearly indicate the earlier the cool, the better the outcome is. And this is by now, 2021, supported in the US guidelines. One should cool as early as possible. However, there is no other solution that's safe and, fe safe and feasible to do this, bar the rhino shield. And now I'm going to tell you a little bit about a, a project where we have an EU grant of 3 million euro together with University of Freiburg. Combined TTM treatment with another medical device procedure called thrombectomy. Uh, and thrombectomy is, uh, is a procedure where you use uh, basically a pliers to, to take out the blood clotted from the artery in the brain. And it came out five landmark clinical trials in 2015, which actually resulted in a much higher clinical results in these stroke patients for survival with good neurological function. Um, it started out with uh, guidelines in 2016 where roughly 20,000 patients were treated wo worldwide. It's about to reach more than 20, 200,000 patients this year and the aim is that this patient population will increase to up to 1.7 million already in 2025. There's seven centers in Swindon doing this procedure, but it's already reached over the 900 treatment centers in the U.S. and more than 210 in Germany, where we have our project where, where, with Freiburg. So in Germany alone, 16,000 is expected to be treated in 2022. And the research question is quite easy. Can TTM, target temperature man management, further improve results? And here you see the, the process of implementing thrombectomy. From the stroke onset, you go to the hospitals. At the ER, one makes a diagnosis of MRI or CT uh, and get transferred to a nevro cath lab where basically the removal of the blood clot uh, is happening and reperfusion to the brain is restored. Uh, and, and one is treated in the ICU of the po at a post-reperfusion recovery. So first you have the ischemic injury, and after the blood clot you have a reperfusion injury. And here is our pitch for, for TTM, because reperfusion leads to brain damage. That, that is the sort of scientific fact. Uh, and, and the idea here is to implement the Rhinochill device, quick early cooling, before the thrombectomy procedure. So when the blood clot is removed, the patient should already be at target temperature and then move to the ICU using the brain cool system. So, so we have implemented a clinical development plan of two clinical trials that's approved by the German pharmaceutical agency, BFARM. Uh, and what we're doing is combine TTM, uh, TTM treatment with thrombectomy. There is five landmark clinical trials, as I, I 
presented, and that brought survival with good neurological function from 19 to 30 percent, which is defined according to the modified ranking scale, uh, scale which is here. Basically, zero is nothing, and six is dead, and zero to do, zero to two, is defined as a good. Uh, neurological function. So our aim is to, of course to impair the reperfusion injuries. And in Freiburg there is actually two retrospective clinical studies from 2016 showing what are the results of trabectomy at our sites. And that's 35% with MRS 0 to 2 if the patient get directly to the hospital that contacts the trombectomy or 30% if they're transferred from another hospital to the main hospital. Yes, uh, we have presented uh, strong feasibility data at an internal meeting at Ignite, which is a non-profit organization, to a number of high-profile traumectomy centers uh, this Monday. Uh, these results will also presented the final results at a Never Rudd conference, which is a big traumectomy conference in Germany this October. The aim is to get to the second trial, a randomized trial, which could be about 400 patients uh, that's expected to start this year. So, the clinical trials that has been completed is we implement the rhinoshield early before trombectomy procedure. During trombectomy, you can continue the coup with the rhinoshield and then you're moved to the ICU where the patient is then treated with a brain cool system for 13 hours. In this project, we only use the brain cell concept, which is the combination of these two, two devices and some other IPR that's connecting these uh, uh, devices with patient data. So the endpoints of the clinical trial of CODIS-1 are only finished this September because we're recruiting the lost patients here early in June and then on a number of endpoints, there's a three month follow up. But in this internal meeting where we have high support of the German Association for Intensive Care Medicine, and even in the EU grant, we have a non profit organization which is called Ignite, which actually is a subgroup of this association, which only has one focus to give dissemination and information about this device concept to the trombectomy market in Germany and Europe. So a number of endpoints were discussed at this meeting June 6th, which has been distributed by a press release to the stock market uh, uh, yesterday, uh, the evening of Monday. So the endpoints worth mentioning is that the primary clinical endpoint was met. Safety and feasibility and the use of the devices has had no problems at all. It's been very smooth, easy to implement. Uh, uh, and, and the protocol has been followed to a high degree. The other one, one, the other primary endpoint is the time to reach the target temperature of 35 degrees. And that was actually done with the Rhino Shield within 30 win. The median time was 31 minutes with the average, well, with the cooling rate of 2.6 degrees of Celsius. And this is important. This is very, very quick and, and re actually resulted that 90% of the patients already had reached target when the trompectomy intervention was done. And that could be important, uh, which may, because cooling impairs the reperfusion injuries. Secondary clinical endpoints that we discussed, the MRS 0 to 2 after three months, that's the hard data in trompectomy trials. Everything is uh, judged on that. Here we don't have the study, but we have the data when the patient was discharged from hospitals median time eight to nine days after the stroke onset. And actually more than two thirds of the patients had MRS zero to two, meaning survival with good neurological function. Yes, this is a safety feasibility trial, but the trend is very, very interesting. That's actually double than the survival normally in Freiburg. However, the hard data will be the MRS, MRS 0 to 2 after three months. We don't have that now. However, the normal, uh, normal, the normal fact is actually that the stroke patient is in much better shape after three months than after hospital discharge.
That was actually confirmed in a patient set of 10 completed patients that none of these patients were in worse states. There was even a patient which had MRS4 that had reached MRS2. So, so these results has a very, very positive trend, but it is a safety feasibility trial which has been which has had very successful results and we now aim to go into the next step of making a CODIS-2, a randomized clinical trial. That clinical protocol will be defined over the coming month or two, depending on the results of the CODIS-1 trial, but this is what we presented to the EU. We had an aim to increase the average result of Freiburg or Germany of thrombectomy from 32 to 46 patients. To reach statistical significance, you would need 400 patients. Now the feasibility study is, is completed, so we have to assess that a little bit. But if that would be met, uh, we, here are a number of health economic parameters, which are huge if one can do this for stroke patients in Europe. Actually, the, the main uh, point to mention is that could reduce the overall cost burden of stroke in Europe by 11 billion euro per year. So our aim now is to plan ahead for the CODIS-2 trial. And I think we have to stop there for questions. Thank you, Martin. So um, how would you judge uh, your chances of repeating these results in a, in a randomized trial? First of all, uh, I don't know, because a feasibility trial is a feasibility trial, but it's a very, very good signal, of course, and that the safety of feasibility is met. This will be easy to expand into other sites in Germany, and to be honest, the interest of this trial is enormous in Germany, and already in outside of Germany. So, so and one could, of course, mentioning that if we aim to do 400 patients and do a sort of increase from 32 to 46 percent, you noted the enormous economic benefit that will have. So let's say you set the target of 9% instead from 32 to 41. It's easier to reach statistical significance, but you might need 600 patients instead of 400 patients, but that might be worth it. And then just uh, finally, could you give us a quick update on the uh, status in your oncology project? The, the oncology device is in a late stage phase of, we're working to get MBR approval, which is needed for marketing in Europe. And we're in a de novo 510k process where we are. We hope to be on the final stretch. And more information about oncology will not come until one of these devices are approved. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Martin. Thank you.